Hi, this is Matt McIntosh and in this video we're just going to look at how you can go about rendering out a, a sequence of um, images to do with your animation. So as you can see, I've got a bit of animation on this character playing uh, when I click on that play button. Uh, if we go to this render button though, uh, you can see that there's not a lot of interest in that image, it's all black area. Um, so what I want to do with this is make it look a little bit better. Now, there is a system uh, under the light option where you can get, you know, V-Ray, standard lights, all sorts of kind of spotlights and things like that. Um, we're not going to use these. What we're going to use is under the systems uh, option. It's called daylight. If you click on that and press the yes button for creating daylight system, what it allows you to do is drag out a compass and a light in the scene. So as we can see, the uh, light has been created. Now, this works on real um, information. So at specific times of the day, it will look like uh, specific um, environments. Uh, to get it working properly, though, go to where it says sunlight and turn it to MR sun and skylight, turn that to MR sky and then click on the yes with regards to the exposure. If I click on render again, you can see that it's not quite, you know, looking as good as it should do. So what I need to do is go to this render button here, go to where it says assign renderer, and instead of it being default scan line, um, I'm going to be using the NVIDIA mental ray. Um, you get all sorts of different renderers in here, but we just need the mental ray. When you click on it, uh, click on render, and what you'll find is that it's put a background in there now, as I say, because you're using a skylight that's based on real um, settings, if you change that to like a night time or whatever, that background would actually change. Okay, so I'm going to go back uh, to my geometry and I'm just going to put in a polyplane uh, so that when I render this out, I actually end up with a shadow uh, to show where the character's moving. So as you can see, there's a, a shadow there. But the size of this thing isn't really um, appropriate. So first off, what I'm going to do is just put a grey material onto the floor. Go back to my render setup. <coughs> and instead of using 640 by 480 which would be good for doing tests and stuff, I'm going to go to the HDTV video section and select the 1920 by 1080 And if I click on render there, you can see it's a much bigger... Um, you know, uh, frame. So this will be really good for rendering out your final images to meet the actual, um, you know, standardized HD appearance. Um, the issue with it, because it's larger, it's going to take longer to render. So you might want to do your tests uh, for your renders on smaller images first, and then when you're happy with it, come up to this um, scale. What would make your life a little bit easier when you're showing animations is to make a copy of it. So as you can see from this, all I've done is selected the uh, character and then press shift and dragged. Now, as I was rotating there, it wasn't giving me like full numbers. So we can change uh, the amount by turning angle snap on. And as you can see, that allows me to get 180 degrees much more effectively. So... I'm playing these animations and as you can see things aren't quite going right and that's just because I've grabbed the uh, triangle section and I've rotated it around by 180. That isn't going to give you the effect that you're after. So what I'm going to do is just delete this out of the scene, select the base again, press shift and drag it along but instead of rotating the base around what I'm going to do is rotate the character around. So select the base. Under your layer manager, go to the layer transform. Little green button with a or little arrow button. And it gives you this little um, dummy object, this cube. Uh, if you select that and rotate it around by 180 degrees, what you'll see is that it actually then performs the animation in the way that you were expecting. So if I play this now, we've got it working. So to come out of that, what you need to do is select the base again, and then D 
or unselect the uh, button that I pressed earlier. So let's just play that through. There we go. Not too much of a an overlap between the two characters. Um, if you're wanting to move the character around, probably select the whole thing. But what I'm going to do now is just put a camera into the scene. Um, and this is just a, a standard target camera. Now, if you had a specific angle that you are happy with in perspective, you could just press, uh, I believe it's uh, Control-C or uh, Alt-C or maybe Shift-C, and that will create a, a camera in the angle that you had. Um, have a play around with those buttons, see which one that is, but I, I tend to just set it up this way, which is put a camera in the scene, go back to my quad view so that I can you know, control where it's going to be positioned in real space. Press Shift F to put on uh, the framed view of what's going to actually render out. Uh, and then that way you can actually line things up. If you try moving the object after you've rotated that element around, it's not going to move. So make sure that you select the entire rig to do that. Okay, uh, so yeah, as you can see, Rendering out, I've got two versions of the character in there. It's looking a lot better than it did um, because we've got proper shading on it. Uh, we've got some nice light in there. Uh, it's quick and easy to do. Uh, the only concern that you've got is the amount of time that it's going to take to render out these videos. Um, but as you can see, it, it, that's not the longest time in the world to produce a, a HD ready uh, image. Okay, so if you're wanting to actually save this out, uh, what you'd be looking at doing is going to the render output, telling it which folder you actually want it to render into. Um, what I tend to do is save it as a target file, um, mainly because it doesn't lose any information when it renders. Uh, with a JPEG, it will do compression, so you will lose uh, some of the clarity with it. Um, you will have the option of saving out frames. I'm just going to save um, this one specific image, but you can do entire sequences. Okay, so um, what I'm also going to do is just show you, you can put in a little bit of text so that you don't have to uh, re-render out the video later on with um, you know, subtitles or anything like that. You could potentially do it all within 3ds max so i'm just using a text spline and what i'm going to do is just line that up in front of my camera so that it looks appropriate uh, to make it show up to the camera because it's just lines at the moment i need to put an extrude modifier onto it and i'm just going to give it a little bit of thickness and then um what I'll also look at doing is just scaling it down slightly so it's not as intrusive and maybe put um, a different colour onto it just so it stands out a little bit more. Okay, so if we just... I'm just going to frame this a little bit better and then click on render. You can see that that's included... Uh, I'll just scroll down. That's included that text that I've just created. Uh, it's nice, clean and crisp. And yeah, uh, if you replace that with uh, the name of the file or your name, job done. Okay, thanks for watching.